Hi, Rashid Kapadia here with another Vipassana Voyage video, a milestone video, my sixth video, but it marks the completion of about, almost the completion of one year since I started on this voyage. It's going to be a slightly long video. It's going to be a compilation. Actually, it has nine agenda items, starting from what is Vipassana, what are its benefits, what was my experience in the December course, my first as an old student, and also a closeout with clips of the experience of other meditators. Hopefully, this will be as useful to others as the many, many videos I have watched have been useful to me. So, nine agenda items. One and two is... What is Vipassana? What are its benefits? Three to six will be agenda items that cover my recent December 2018 course experience. Item seven is what is my long-term commitment? What is my long-term commitment? My long-term goals? What do I, why am I doing this? Item number eight is some resources that I have found very useful and I'm sure any serious old student will find useful. And we'll close out with the last agenda item, which is the clip on the experience of others. I also want to reinforce the core message. So I use a concept from music called in the Rondo theme, where you make a statement, then you come to the theme, then you make statement number two, you return to the theme, you make statement number three, you return to the theme, etc. So here is my Rondo message. What is Vipassana? The core of the Vipassana practice is continuous awareness of body sensations without reacting. Conscious of everything, reacting to nothing. Equanimity, plus awareness, that is the Vipassana technique. I must not forget this. Continuity of practice, continuous practice with proper understanding is the secret. It is the formula for success. And a constant reminder, this is a technique. This is hard work. This is not a ritual or a rite and no magical or mystical intervention is being sought. That is the core message. You'll hear me say it over and over again in this video. Now let's move on to agenda item number one. What is Vipassana? It is a compilation clip from three sources, two documentaries and an interview. The first documentary is called Changing from Within. The second is doing Time Doing Vipassana. And the third is an interview with a very noted historian. Let's move on to the movie clip. What is Vipassana? The meditation program has three essential parts. The first is a code of basic moral conduct. For the duration of the 10 days, students vow to abstain from killing, from stealing, from sexual misconduct, from lying, and from using any intoxicants. Next comes the practice of concentration, or mastery over the mind. In Anapana, students observe their own respiration. They work at focusing their attention on the breath as it enters and leaves the nostrils. As students practice the technique, they experience the turbulent and nearly uncontrollable activity of their own mind. Thoughts, memories, emotions, reveries, even songs arise to overwhelm one's attention. Little by little, the student learns to focus their attention and master the wildness of their own mind. Finally, they will use their heightened concentration to develop insight into their own nature. As they sit quietly, students practice objectively observing the changing flow of sensations, whether pleasant or unpleasant, that arise in the body. They begin to understand the origins of their thoughts and behavior at a deeper level, beyond the intellectual realm of ideas and concepts, at the experiential level. Gradually, they develop detachment toward the compulsive cravings and aversions which control them. This is the beginning of self-knowledge, or wisdom. Vipassana is a journey of discovery, taken with closed eyes.
The goal is not simply to satisfy the traveler's curiosity, but to get transformed by the journey and start living a better life. Vipassana means to see things as they really are, in their true nature. It is an ancient meditation technique discovered 25 centuries ago in India by a man named Siddhartha Gautama, known as the Buddha. The records from the Buddha's time tell remarkable stories of serial killers changed into saints and of cruel tyrants who became model rulers by practicing this technique. At first, all one is asked to do is to focus on one's own natural breath, to feel it coming in and out of the nostrils and to maintain this awareness for as long as possible. Sounds simple, but it's not. sits down to be still, an endless stream of thoughts wells up in the mind. Memories, hopes, fears start flooding in. After a three-day struggle, the mind quiets down. Thoughts become faint, faded like passing clouds. By focusing for so long on the small patch of skin below the nostrils, the mind becomes so sensitive that it can feel the subtlest flow of breath. A new realm of sensations unfolds within this area. Itching, tingling, heat, pressure, natural physical sensations never before experienced so vividly. Only then is one prepared to learn Vipassana. Continuous awareness of physical sensations without reacting is the core of the Vipassana practice. Every sound, vision, taste, smell, everything that contacts the body instantly produces some sensation. The technique focuses on natural physical sensations as the crucial link between mind and body the key to understanding human behavior. Through Vipassana, one realizes that one's own attitudes and addictions, suffering and happiness, are not caused by the outside world. It is the reactions to pleasant or unpleasant sensations the world evokes within the body that dictate one's actions and conditions the mind. fourth day of the course, Vipassana is taught. Students learn how to observe objectively all the sensations in their bodies, whatever they may be, without reacting to them. They watch emotions come and go. They watch pain come and go. They watch pleasure come and go. And they realize not intellectually, but through their own experience, that nothing is permanent. Hatred, passion, greed are not abstract anymore. By watching the physical sensations accompanying these emotions and by understanding their impermanent nature, one can actually start changing the habit of blind reaction. Between the two poles of expression and suppression lies a third option, mere observation. Um, you are somebody who practices a Vipassana. Um, does that help you get closer to the Force? Is that where you get closer to the Force? 
I practice Vipassana meditation to see reality more clearly, to be able to see what is reality, what is really happening right here, right now. I'm not doing it as any kind of religious exercise to get in touch with this force or that force, with this story or that story. It's really for me then the least dogmatic thing I ever encountered in life is Vipassana meditation. It just tells you, just observe what is really happening right now as it is without trying to impose any story on it, without trying to change it in any way. I mean, I remember the first time I went to a course and the first instruction I got from the teacher was observe your breath. Not observe God, not observe the soul, just observe your breath coming in and out of your nostrils and just accept the breath, whatever it is. If it is strong, if it's weak, if it comes from this nostril or that nostril, it doesn't matter. Just observe the reality as it is. And what amazed me was that I couldn't do it for more than 10 seconds. Immediately the mind ran away to some story, some fantasy, some memory. If I can't observe the reality of my own breath, for 10 seconds, how can I hope to observe the reality of the global political system or of the global economic system? So that's exactly the question. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I, I try, I try to do both. I've been practicing for 18 years now. Wow. And uh, it's been very hell. I don't think more I could than do... ten seconds now. More than 10 seconds, I try. So how, how <laughs> Sometimes about... I succeed. I, um, this year I went to a 60 days course here wow. in India. Uh, I, 60 days? 60 days. I didn't stay focused for 60 days, of course. The mind keeps running away, but keep trying. And I don't think I could have written any of my books without the help of, of the focus and the discipline the, and, the, and the clarity that this kind of meditation uh, gives. So when you're deep in meditation, I'm dying to ask this question, and we have quite a lot of people from Bollywood here today, so they've obviously seen some of these films. Does everything start looking like in algorithms and codes, like in Matrix, no, you know, no, when no. he evolves? <laughs> you have a pain in the stomach and your knee hurts, oh, and no. <laughs> then the mind runs away to some memory that, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that. And this is how you get to know yourself. I, I think. I think many people make a mistake about meditation, that they think meditation is a tool to get all kinds of special experiences. Mm -hmm. Like I go to an amusement park, and this is another kind of amusement park. I'll use meditation to have all kinds of special experiences. And actually, I think the most important benefit of meditation is to get to know the most ordinary, daily, natural patterns of your mind and of your body. To get to know your anger, your pain, your joy, your, your boredom, because it's, this is what you have to deal with li in life. If meditation is a kind of vacation, like for a couple of days I have these special experiences, but then for most of the year I still have to deal with my anger and my boredom, it didn't really help me. Is this the purpose of life? Is this the purpose of life? Um, As you see it. Well, I, I think that the, the key to a good life is to be able to observe reality as it is. To really under, what, what is the truth about myself and about the world without running away to all kinds of fantasies and stories and fictions. And I think if you can observe to some degree reality as it is, you're not just, you won't just be a much better person, but you'll probably be a much more peaceful and happy person because the deep source of so much of our personal and collective problems is in the fantasies that we create 
And then we mistake them from reality, for reality. And then we try to impose them on reality. And we get extremely upset when it doesn't work, when reality doesn't conform to our favorite fantasy. But it's also part of the paradox, because what you're saying is, sit quietly in meditation, go in, and then we have all this technology constantly calling out to us. I mean, everyone here, I'm sure, would agree with me that if your phone is away from you for five minutes, you're like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? You're checking your phone at least well, 80 times a day. Exactly. So, so observe that. I mean, what's happening to you when you're away from your phone? What's happening in your body? You will see that there are a lot of unpleasant sensations in your body at the time. What's happening in your mind? This is how you get to know yourself. You get to know yourself not by observing some blissful, uh, uh, metaphysical, mystical experience. You get to know yourself by observing what happens to me when, when the phone is away. And once you witness how much misery I am inflicting on myself by my own habits, this can help you in um, changing these harmful habits. So one of the things you said before is that suffering is a sign of consciousness. If something suffers, then it's real and it's conscious. Then is our purpose to suffer rather no, no, than no. be happy? <laughs> Certainly not. I'm not saying that we are here to suffer. We try to be, we can liberate ourselves from suffering. What I said in, in some of what I wrote is that the best test to know whether an entity is real or whether it's a fiction invented by politicians and, and, and religious leaders and so forth is to ask can this entity suffer? A nation, for example, is just a human creation. It's a fictional story created by humans. How do you know? Just ask yourself, can a nation suffer? If you lose a war, does the nation suffer? No. The nation has no mind, no feelings, no sensations. Soldiers who die in war, they suffer. Civilians who lose their house or their loved ones in war, they suffer. Animals can suffer, but a nation cannot suffer. It's just a story we created. So this is the, 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 the idea of the test of suffering as a test to know whether something is real or not. Similarly, I don't know, if you have some temple mm -hmm. and somebody destroys the temple, the temple doesn't suffer. Only people suffer. The people who care about this temple, when they hear that it is destroyed, they have a very unpleasant sensation in the body. They have very unpleasant emotions in the mind. They suffer. But the temple, it's, it's just, you know, stones and bricks and wood and so forth. But it represents a certain amount of emotions. Now, there's yes. a temple in Israel which is connected to everything. We have a temple here as well which is kind of connected to everything, so... Yeah, but we invest the temple with importance. We suffer when the temple is destroyed. We rejoice when the temple is built. It's really about us, not about the temple. And I would say also to people in Israel who care very much about the temple that the deep purpose of a place like a temple is to bring peace and harmony to the world. To make people, I go to a temple to experience peace and harmony. Now if a temple brings violence and disharmony to the world, it's a broken temple. What do you need it for? Thank you. Hi, welcome back. I hope you found that clip interesting and useful. I hope it was as enjoyable for you as it was for me to make it, to put it all together. Now we move on to agenda item number two. But before that, the Rondo theme, what is Vipassana? Continuous awareness of body sensations without reacting, conscious of everything, reacting to nothing. Awareness plus equanimity. That is the Vipassana technique. 
continuity of practice with proper understanding, formula for success. It is a technique, it is hard work, it is not a rite or a ritual, no magical or mystical intervention is being sourced. It's being sought. Now, agenda item number two, what are the benefits? Why are we putting in this much time and this much effort? First, first point, the benefit should be here and now. If there, if there is no benefit from doing the work, then either we're doing it wrong or the technique doesn't work. It really means that we're not practicing correctly, so we may be doing the work without the proper understanding. Equanimity resulting from a purified mind, that is the sought benefit. Once we are awareness, aware of our body sensations and we dissolve the impurities, we have a purified mind which results in equanimity. And put differently, Equanimity is what helps us prevail over the built-in habits of aversion and craving. That's the big benefit of doing these techniques. Here are a couple of quotes that I picked up and I would like to share them. When faced with life's vicissitudes, ups and downs, changes, our minds should be unshaken. They should be free from sorrow, from suffering, from impurity, from fear. This is the highest well-being. That's marvelous. I certainly want that benefit. Hmm? A mind unshaken by the vicissitudes of life, sorrowless, stainless, secure. This is our greatest welfare. That's a benefit I seek and I'm sure everyone else does. Now, when we get to the state of being more equanimous, having more equanimity of mind, here are some reported benefits and certainly I've begun to felt them. First is you default towards goodwill with, for others. You don't seek anything in exchange. You Automatically when you see someone, you feel like helping them. It just becomes automatic. Second is you want to benefit others without a trade. A love that seeks to support others without expecting anything in turn. The third benefit of equanimity is compassion for others, especially in their failings and in their sufferings. And the fourth benefit, widely reported, is a sympathetic joy when others are doing well or having success. All benefits worth having. Now, other immediate benefits are the dissolving of the, what they call defilements or impurities. Fear, anger, hatred, jealousy, illicit uh, passion, and so on and so forth. We are all familiar with it. We would all be better off with little less of it and eventually to have none of it. And one more benefit that I seek very specifically is having pinpoint concentration and being able to hold that concentration for long periods of time. These are the multiple benefits that I must keep at the top of my mind as I continue my practice so that it doesn't become a blind exercise. A blind exercise where I'm just sitting and not really knowing with proper understanding what I'm doing or what I hope to get out of this. So that covers agenda item number two. Back to our Rondo message. The core of the Vipassana practice, continuous awareness of physical sensations without reacting, conscious of everything, reacting to nothing. Equanimity plus awareness. That is the Vipassana technique, continuity of practice with proper understanding. That is the secret for success. This is a technique, it is not a rite or a ritual. Now we move on to agenda items three to six, which are specific to my experience of the December 2018 course, my first time as an old student. What did I want to do before I left? What were my top priorities that this is what I am going for and this is what I want to achieve? Here's what I had in mind. I, I wanted to meditate for a maximum amount of time in the Dhamma Hall or even in the pagodas. Because the first time I went, I struggled to stay there. I stayed in my room or outside longer than I felt was optimal. So this time I said, no matter what, strong determination, I'm going to sit in that Dhamma Hall all the time or in the pagoda, one of these two places, and I will minimize, absolutely minimize the time that I am either outside or 
meditating in my room, which sometimes allows me to slack off, to be honest. So that was my top priority. The second is I said, I'm going to pay much more attention and extreme concentration to the instructions because I knew there was treasure here and it is so difficult not just to absorb it but to, to kind of care about it and to remember it. So my goal is anytime there are instructions, pay attention, pay attention and try and memorize, pay attention and try and memorize. It was the second goal of mine, second priority. The third one was don't fast. But the food is delicious, so don't overeat. Eat just enough so you can have an optimal meditation practice and experience. And then I also wanted, once I came out, to have a better structure, a formula, some kind of way in which the one-hour practices, morning and evening, that I have to do on a daily basis are better structured. I have a better understanding of what I'm doing and I'm not struggling or wasting my time. So these were my four goals before going in. Maximize meditation time in the Dhamma hall, memorize the instructions, eat sensibly, and try to develop a plan for eventual one-hour routines. Uh, I, I'm going to give myself a few grades. In the first one, I think I did very well. I'll give myself an A. I spent all the time either in the Dhamma Hall or in the Pagodas. The second, as much as I could, I'll give myself an A as well because I really made an effort to understand every time he was speaking. The food, it was a little too good. I ate a little bit more than I should have. So I'll give myself a C. And coming up with a plan, well, I got that accomplished. I made a good one, two pages of notes that will guide me through my one hour sittings every day. So I'll give myself an A for that too. And that covers the agenda item three. What were my top priorities going in? Now, on to agenda item number four. What were the top takeaways? What did I get from spending here 10 days? Agenda item number four. Here we go. First, one more time, I was conscious and I was actively very grateful for the fact that I could be here for 10 days, completely taken care of, food, lodging, expert instructions, superb atmosphere for meditating. And this was a gift given to me by someone else. So I was constantly aware that I am so grateful that this opportunity has been given to me. Second, like I discovered in January 2018, I rediscovered in December 2018, this is hard work. Have to work hard, have to work hard. No shortcuts, nothing magical. Keep working, keep working, keep working, keep working. Hard work, hard work, hard work, strong determination. I rediscovered this and it is the core of creating success for yourself over 10 days. Third takeaway, one more time, like I discovered in January 2018, I was in the presence of a masterful teacher, Mr. S. N. Goenka. He has passed away, but the course was given using his videos and his audios. And my God, he is an excellent teacher. I believe this is one of the reasons why this course is so successful all across the globe for decades now. I was in the presence of a master teacher. Don't forget this. Be grateful that this gift has been left for us. As always, the discourses were a high point for me. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Even though I've heard them so many times now, I greatly enjoyed them. I also became aware that I am gaining much more than I expected. There's a deeper understanding of what this technique is about. On a day-to-day -day basis, I felt myself absorbing being a successful student. So it worked. it's working for me. It was not so much of a repetition as it was like a, a renewal experience. And again, I was reminded that the possibilities here, the benefits, they are very real. They are pragmatic. This is technique-based. So these were my top takeaways. Agenda item number five. What are my top decisions that I made going forward? Now that I've finished with the course, what 
do I want to do? Must continue practice every day. It's so easy to say it right here. Must continue practice every day, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, in a structured, sensible way, so that you do uh, breathing awareness and bodily sensation awareness using all that I have accumulated over the last year. One of my decisions was to make notes immediately after finishing the course so that I can consolidate that memorization and even help me to make this video. And I got that done. Another benefit, another commitment long term is keep reading the books. I, I think that the books I read and the videos I watched brought about that right understanding, that enhanced, upgraded understanding, which combined with the practice has been most useful. So continue going forward. Keep reading the books, even if you have to reread them. Watch the videos again. Each time you pick up a new little nugget, something that keeps us the forward progress going. And I realize this. You must do a 10-day retreat every year. Easy to say, probably hard to do, but zero doubt left in my mind. What I get out of a 10-day retreat as an old student is hugely beneficial. And I cannot do this at home or from the one-day courses or the short courses. A 10-day course, something deeply transformative it takes place inside of me. I must try to one 10-day course every year. And also, I would like to do 10-day service every two, perhaps three years. I'm grateful to say I had a chance to do service also this year. So that completes item agenda five. Here's the long one. Agenda item number six. What was it that I learned? What was it that I learned? Now, the teacher said something on day zero. Imagine that your attention is like a a guard, a sentinel at your nostrils and every breath that's going in or going out. You must be aware of it. The guard must be aware that the breath is going in and going out. This metaphor, this analogy, this image helped me a lot and I've built it into my daily practice. I, I make a picture of my attention being a guard here before I start. So my full attention is here. It worked very well for me. On the first day, there were separate instructions for the old students. Uh, and that, that was particularly helpful for me. I missed it the first time, but it, pay attention to this if you're an old student. I was pleasantly surprised with my success with Anapana over the first three and a half days. It was definitely far better than any of my previous experience, which again reinforces the message, you must do these long-term continuous 10-day courses. On day two, we were assigned a pagoda cell. And the first, the, when I did it in my first course in January, I remember being unable to sit there. It was just, I, I couldn't do it. But this time I was pleasantly surprised. It became like a secure sanctuary. And I could spend hours, between two to four hours every day, meditating in complete isolation in that pagoda cell. So if you have that facility, push through and use it. It is a marvelous facility. I found myself thinking that, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had access to a cell like this on a daily basis. And yes, there were the usual check-ins. The assistant teachers are so, so sincere in making sure that everyone is getting it. We had two check-ins on day two and day six. A check-in is where a small group of students is taken to a small room, batches at a time, and the teacher asked each person a question. So here was the question on day two. Can you hold your attention to your breath for at least one minute? He went student to student to student to student. And I'm happy to say most of us said yes, but it also initiated a conversation as how we can do better. And on day six, the question he asked everyone, person by person, eye contact, looking at you. Can you feel sensations over your entire body, part by part, and free flow. And most of us, yes, we could do it. And it also, it's interesting to hear how others are struggling and coping with the process and the practice in these small uh, sessions. So I made a mental note that I will remember this. Can I focus on my breath uninterrupted for at least a minute? 
Can I continuously feel sensations all over my body, part by part and free flow? At the end of day seven, the teacher said something. Now imagine that there are no more breaks because all students and longer courses are not expected to have breaks. Make it a continuous practice even when you're on a break. Try to be aware of your body sensations. Try to be in a meditative state of mind. This helped me a lot. From, being, from day seven onwards, I realized that I must have a commitment to being in a meditative state at every opportunity I get. On day eight was one of my best days. I had a superb success with free flows. I mean, sensations I could, I could scan and sweep my body hundreds of times over and over, almost with each breath. And I could tell that it's working. I knew that I'm aware of my body sensations with much higher resolution. There's less blurredness, there's far more clarity. So yes, I could see concrete results on day eight and on day nine, superb instructions. I did my best to remember them. They were morning and evening. They may have been identical, but they were very similar. The day nine instructions were splendid. So this is my takeaway. And even for old students, if you're going back, make sure you absorb, you, you sponge as much as you can of the instructions on day nine, because that is what you can carry forward into your daily sittings going forward. After day 10, I went over all the booklets again and made a few notes. So that sums up my day-to-day -day experience and agenda item six of my Vipassana voyage. Before moving on to agenda item number seven, which is what are the long-term benefits that I seek? Let's revisit our Rondo theme, the core items that I must constantly remember. The core of the Vipassana practice is continuous awareness of body sensations without reacting. Conscious of everything, reacting to nothing. Awareness plus equanimity is equal to Vipassana meditation. The formula for success, continuous practice and proper understanding. Reminder, repeated reminder, this is a technique which is hard work. It is not a rite, it is not a ritual, it is not any kind of magical or mystical intervention. Keep this in mind at all times. Okay, now let's move on to item seven. Agenda item seven, what are the long-term benefits I want? First, I want to increase and increase my default goodwill to all. The minute I see another person, I hope that these thoughts and sensation come to mind. I want this person to be well. I want to have goodwill for this person. If I practice this technique and the default goodwill goes up, outstanding. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Second is that, again, an instinct, an increase in the default to just want to help others, to serve others, to feel some kind of, not a pressure, but also, yes, a pressure to make a contribution, uh, a, a desire, instinct, help others, help others. And this is not looking for anything in return. Just support someone. If you see someone struggling a little bit, open the door, help them a little bit, just anything small. I want to be able to do more and more of this and I know it's happening. I want to be like this long term. Three, increased compassion, especially for the suffering and the failing of others. This is a little easier said to do and done, especially when we don't like them or they are our enemies. We struggle to have compassion for them. Oh yes, when someone is failing and struggling, it is my responsibility, my duty, my opportunity to feel compassion for them. Item number four, increase joy when someone is doing well. Sympathetic joy, when they're doing well, when they have success, no envy, no, no ill will, nothing. Just compassionate joy. All right, you did well. Congratulations on your success. I default. I want to feel this. I want to feel this. So long term, I have to dissolve what we call all these mental defilements, anger, jealousy, rage, hatred, 
illicit passion and on and on and on. We are all familiar with this. Much better for me, much better for you, much better for the world if we can all dissolve these together. Come back. I want greater focus. I want to be able to stick at a job, take a job, shut the rest of the world out and work for long periods of time with sharpened focus. This is very important for me. Now we move on to agenda item eight, which is purely for old students. This is some resources that I recommend you keep with you and you refer them to regularly to keep up the practice. The first is this excellent little booklet that I picked up, Guidelines for Practice. It is for old students and if you're a new student, you know, don't fool yourself and think that you're going to get the benefit without the practice. Just, just go do a course and then take it from there. So the guideline for practice, read this booklet quite regularly. And even if you feel you know it all and you say, yes, I know this, I know this. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. You can pick up a nugget or two. And if you feel you know everything, okay, let me focus on one item. Let me focus on one item. But it's a superb reminder of the work that we have to do all the time. That sums up what you have to do. You know, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, five minutes in the First thing when you wake up, five minutes. Last thing when you go to sleep, be aware of your body sensations. Try to get with a group on a weekly basis. Commit to doing a 10-day course every year. Commit to doing one-day courses as often as you can, etc., etc. Systematic, beautiful reminder to help us progress on our path. Second resource. This is something I picked up from the course. It's a DVD, got lots of nice little videos, interviews. Every now and then I watch one or two of them. And even though it's familiar, again, you pick up a little nugget here, there, you connect some dots. So it's worth keeping this with you. Most helpful to me was this book, A Meditator's Handbook, How to Untie Knots. Very quick read, simple, keep it by your side, available in PDF format for free, on the Vipassana website. I think that's only for old students, but very good reminder of a master student, a master meditator who has been with Mr. Goenka for decades. If you haven't already done that, this flash drive, $25 from the Pariyati website, is probably the single most value for money investment available. It's got books, discourses, everything. So if you're tired of reading the same material, you'll find something new to read from here. And finally, I made this. I made the set of notes that will guide me through my one hour practice so that it is, it is beneficial. With the, my wandering mind, sometimes half an hour gone, what did I do? Am I really using my time? My mind has wandered. This has given me some structure. For the first few minutes, I seek refuge in enlightenment. I seek refuge in the teachings. I... I vow to abstain from killing, from taking that which is not giving, from sexual misconduct, from speaking falsely, from intoxicants, etc. A nice structure. You can start with the vows. This type of anapan breathing, start like a new student for a few seconds or even a minute, the entire nose, then going through the nostrils, then the patch of skin, then move to sensations, part by part by part, 5 to 15 minutes, then free flow, then checking out the spine, then checking out uh, small areas randomly for sensations. These are all the notes that I compiled, most of them from the day nine, the technique, the instructions that I spoke on earlier. And I feel that I, I'm feeling better that I'm not, you know, idling my time away like I was before the course when I, my mind was wandering. I was more able to say, yes, you have a structure. So I would strongly recommend figure out what works for you and stay with that. With these resources, certainly all of us can be more committed to that one hour morning and evening without which we begin to lose everything. That completes agenda item number eight. Let me go back to our Rondo theme. What is Vipassana? The core of it is awareness of body sensations, no reaction. Conscious of everything, reacting to nothing. Awareness plus equanimity, that is Vipassana. You want to be successful? What's the formula? Continuous practice, proper understanding. 
Don't you dare forget Rashi. Don't you dare forget. This is only a technique and it requires hard work. It is no rite. It is no ritual. There is no magic. There is no mystery, myst mystical intervention that we are seeking. And now we'll move on to agenda item number nine, which is the experience of other meditators. I found a clip. Actually, I think it was recorded somewhere at a center in Italy. So it's mainly a European perspective of experience of multiple meditators. And it felt good to know that so many of us from so many different parts of the world are making that voyage. And it answers four questions. So why don't you take a look at that clip now, experience of other meditators. And I'll follow it up with another clip from one of my friends, Sri Ram. I haven't met him for 40 years. We were in school together. He's a brilliant guy, a doctor in the United Kingdom, but we've been in touch in our school group on the WhatsApp group and he started meditation. Now, surprisingly, a lot of my batchmates have been doing it. We didn't know this, but I asked him, Sri Ram, here are the four questions. If you don't mind, make a video for me and if you will, I will post it. So what we will have is the clip from the Vipassana organization and a clip from Sri Ram, following which I will answer the four questions myself. Here we go. Experience of other Vipassana meditators. La méditation Vipassana est une technique qui vous apprend vraiment un art de vivre, mieux affronter les événements, vivre dans le quotidien. My neighbor told me about this technique and how wonderful it was and I said, okay, yes, but now I'm going to Mexico so I cannot do it at the moment. And I flew to Mexico and after three days another person came in contact to me and said, you should do Vipassana and that time was like, what, what did you say? Vipassana again. I never heard about this technique for 30 years and now in two parts op opposite in the world. I'm listening about this technique. So I came back and I did the course. And when he came out of the course, I went to collect him from the airport and I just noticed such a, a huge difference in his face. It was just, he looked so calm, so happy, so, so much of the tension had gone. So I was really keen to try this, this technique. I thought it said something I didn't know. So it should give me a telephone number, the nearest one. The nearest one is in Italy. Oh, I'm Italian, wonderful. So I called Italy and said, I would like very much. And I'm very happy there's a course here in Italy, close to my house, etc. Et I was very happy. So I called these people, they were very kind, but they said, no way. It's fully booked for another three months. So if you want to make a course right now, impossible, sorry. I had just left Romania after a really difficult time uh, under the dictatorship, the revolution came, I had just so many things which I wasn't clear about or which were not really clear for me. Um, then I discovered the world um, and then suddenly Vipassana came into my life and everything shifted. So I try in Switzerland, I try in France, fully booked, I try in Spain, fully booked, I try in England, fully booked. I expected something completely different. I was. Uh, I expected something more uh, relaxative. And it was a bit difficult for me because uh, I went through a hard time before and now I'm, I'm finding myself in a situation where again I have to go to quite a hard time. Uh, I decided to, you know, to stick to the 10 days and see and work um, seriously and then see what comes out. And I was totally surprised in the end what, 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 what came out, you know, like like a new beginning for my life. A huge amount of emotional ups and downs. It was a roller coaster. It was, it was, it was difficult, but uh, you know, tough going, but very, very beneficial at the end. Mm. I really, really wanted to work hard and, and to get the best results I could out of the 10 days I had there and to try and come out of this suffering that I was creating. And uh, at the end of the course, having worked really hard, I just, I saw Davide, because he'd served my course, my partner, 
and I just felt so full of joy. I was just crying because I just felt so much lighter. As you know, you look and you say things, but you never do it. And so at the end of the year, my wife gave a present on Christmas, and um, that was a uh, card on which was written, uh, you have 10 days of leave from your company and family life to do this course. And so it started. It took me nine months because I said, I cannot leave my company. It will be a chaos uh, if I leave. But um, it went all okay. She took care. I'm happy with that. I was not really looking for meditation or whatever. Um, but when I um, had the flyer, I immediately uh, thought, this gives me a tool to help myself rather than be depending on others. Pojechałam na kurs, był wtedy organizowany latem. No i przeżyłam. So I called Belgium and they said, oh, you just lucky. Because yesterday there was a cancellation, so there's one place free. But you know, the course is starting tomorrow. It's no problem, I'm adjusting the car and it will be there tomorrow morning. So I left my wife and I said, kiss goodbye. She said, I'm completely crazy and I left and went there. And I made the course and my life changed because, you know, since that moment, everything was absolutely different. So much came up that seemed to feel as though I'd released a lot of uh, very difficult emotional um, stuff that had been going on in, in my mind and my life uh, previously. So it just felt clearer, everything felt clearer. Mm. I po tym kursie poczułam, że jest coś bardzo mocnego w tej technice. Jeszcze nie wiedziałam do końca, jak to się u nas mówi, z czym to jest, ale że chcę spróbować jeszcze raz. Pojechałam za pół roku na kurs, drugi, który był dla mnie bardzo mocny. I od tego czasu już uznałam, że to jest moja droga. I find Vipassana gives me, gives me so much space, like a, a real breathing space between, between uh, the difficult situation and, and then how to, how to solve the problem. For myself, I just notice how um, I've got more energy. Um, I get more done than I ever used to. I'm, I've stopped worrying about things. I think I used to be a real worrier many years ago. And I just realized actually there's no point. When you start to react emotionally, that box your ability to work through it, observing it at the level of sensation, of observing your emotions as sensations, observing your mind as sensations, it's bypassing that. You're not getting caught up in it, you're observing it. The atmosphere around you becomes more positive, so the reactions become more positive and yeah, if everybody is more positive then I think it, it influences the world. Na przykład bardzo to widzę w sytuacjach stresowych, y, ponieważ występuję też na scenie. Y, często stres mnie paraliżował, a teraz y, dużo, dużo mniej. I was living in a foreign country in Germany, so whatever I was projecting there was just really my projection. That I thought people thought I would be like this and this because I come from Romania. And then I realized if I approached them differently, I was getting different reactions and new reactions. And I just realized it was all inside me, so it wasn't really all outside. There was no way for me to understand what I wanted. Did I want a, a relationship with a girl or not, with which one, so I, I, it was very unbalanced. And of course, after the first courses, I understood the importance of Sheila and the importance of having um, a balanced emotional life. It took me very few years to understand that I wanted to have children. And I, I must say that now children, my family and the Dhamma are the two most important things. This uh, immense uh, use of, of drugs, you know, alcohol, drinking and, and, and stuff. I, I found a way to, to, yeah, to get rid of it and to reduce it slowly by slowly. And now I stopped it completely. And um, this is not so easy, but with the Vipassana meditation, it was uh, uh, a chance, you know, to, um, yeah, to join a new way of life. 
you know, I used to find it really difficult getting up in the morning, but I don't now. I find it, I've, I'm up early just about every morning and it's not a problem at all. Da sam, bistvo, uh, da se manj vežem, manj me je strah. Mislim, bolj zaupam, da bodo tudi rezultati uh, takšni, kot je dobro, ne samo za mene, ampak v bistvu dobro za, za vse. Mislim, da sem bolj učinkovita, da sem bolj umirjena in s tem tudi na nek način boljše vplivam na druge ljudi. I'm much more productive at work and that means I think that I just that my time out of work is much much better as well. Just much more fun. Um, and my relationships are better and my, my relationships with my family um, have really improved. Vipassana really helps me to open my eyes and not not to react um, with ignorance in the moment, but just to have a much clearer idea of the situation and to suffer less in the, in the situation because I'm not craving for something I don't have or, or really having aversion towards what I don't like. You're not so so focused on yourself anymore. I think that's the main. That's what I notice. I don't know how that's for for the others outside, but for me, it's really that. Um, yeah, you're not the center of the world anymore, and you try to be open for others. I started this new career when I came back to Romania, and I used to be very nervous. So uh, being aware of my being nervous when talking to a lot of people has helped me a lot. And it has also helped me to uh, overcome a lot of barriers in communicating. And I think communicating is essential in my job. You know how business is very often that you do things which are maybe not completely right. So um, in my company I, will, I, want, and I want from everybody a honest way of operation. You know, sometimes I'll go to a sitting feeling very um, agitated or there's been some, some problem going on or something. And quite often, once I've sat or even during the time that I'm sitting, you know, a solution will come into my head. And then I give to the, co to the people working in my company uh, the possibility for them to take 10 days paid uh, so they don't have to take a holiday for doing a course, if they want. I think that um, having a good uh, moral foundation um, is really essential and um, this is also a weak point in all these, uh, I think, in all these ex-communist countries. Um, people have made uh, of cheating and of, of maybe even stealing or of lying a way of resisting a dictatorship, so without realizing that they are really harming themselves. So having a um, a strong foundation in, um, in morality uh, is really helpful and Vipassana is ba based on this. The purifying of the mind, which is what the technique is about, is very, very closely linked to what I do in my sculpture. It's about, I'm, lo I'm looking, searching, if you like, for that purity of form. Uh, and so it's very closely linked. Uh, I bring it into my work more and more and I find it's helped enormously because um, I'm able to, for me, to be able to find this clarity of form which I'm looking for, uh, but I'm also able to do it with a sense of love and peace which I hope comes through my work because that's so important. That is a real fortunate person and I'm happy for him. If you have um, also questions related to the technique and to the whole setup, don't hesitate to actually get in contact with the organization. I think the first doubt would be that this might be a sect. Um, and I would definitely tell them that uh, it is nothing sectarian and it's nothing to do with conversion or with any kind of religion. It's open for, uh, for anybody as we're working with universal things. I didn't change my point of view on a religious field, on a philosophical field, on a political field. I didn't change on that level. What changed was my uh, capacity of thinking and living and behaving. I was in, in the same way, but I was just more balanced. So I wish this could happen to anybody else.
I mean, you should be always, you know, um, critical uh, toward what's happening. You can ask questions. You can you can ask everything, and and you know, you don't you don't need to worry. Just before uh, the course, uh, I don't know, two weeks or one week before, I called the son. I said, actually, I feel a little bit funny, and I don't know if I should be doing that and if it's the right moment. And yeah, these people there, they listened to me, and it was just. Um, they were calming me. There's nothing strange about this technique at all. It's just a very, it's very, very straightforward. And that's one of the things that attracted me, I think, once I'd sort of begun the practice, was that it's, it's, not, it's not about any particular religion. Um, and it's not, a, it's not for people from any particular part of society. It's, it, and it's, it's really, it's, just for, it's for ordinary people, actually, um, which is what I really like about it. And it's just, and, and the actual practice makes complete sense. If you want to sit for 10 days, um, then it is doable. I'm quite a chatty, talkative person, so first I thought, God, am I going to be able to, to shut up, to be quiet for 10 days? And it was no problem at all. Just, just try it uh, and see if it's something for you. Certainly this technique will help you enormously. With your fear, but uh, come with confidence, and then everything will be fine. Hi, I'm Sriram. I'm a GP doctor in rugby in Warwickshire, United Kingdom. And recently, in September of this year, I attended a Vipassana meditation course in Hereford, United Kingdom. Now, I have some suggestions for anyone considering doing a Vipassana meditation course for the first time in the form of answering four essential questions. Question number one, how did I come to do Vipassana meditation? Now, I was introduced to various forms of meditation which I have tried with little benefit. I have found myself more forgetful, less mindful and more irritable and less tolerant. But above all, I have been motivated by inspirational videos and motivation by my childhood uh, classmate and friend from uh, school days, Rishi. I found that this is the correct time and also um, uh, I would like to learn the technique uh, in the correct format. The second question was, what changes have I or others noticed uh, in myself since my meditation course? Now, immediately when I returned from the Vipassana meditation course, I was full of energy, buzzing with energy, boasting about the course, had uh, the ability to get up at 4.30 in the morning, do my one hour of meditation, go to work, do a full day work in my general practice, come back, didn't feel tired and was still able to do an hour in the evening. I kept this practice going, but the energy does wear off after a month, so one must continue the practice for at least two hours a day. People at work had also noticed that I was more efficient, more productive, um, and um, it was uh, certainly a life-changing experience. Question number three is, how did I apply Vipassana meditation in real life situations, in relationship, in social issues, at work, etc.? First and foremost, I would like to say I was able to convince my wife, my mother-in-law and my daughter to actually do a form of meditation and they have sincerely taken this up and have started doing headspace meditation. Secondly, I have found I've been more efficient in my work and a recent course I attended, a, a full day course, which I was actually able to be awake, alert, take notes and even ask questions after the course, which was a first. I have been trying to be more tolerant and the other major change I've noticed in myself is I was able to give up alcohol, even though I attended two major 
social events, reunions of my school friends and another um, birthday occasion where alcohol was in abundance and I used to drink alcohol, I've completely given it up and with a strong determination with Aditana I was able to withhold myself for even tasting a drop. Question number four is from my own experience what would I recommend for somebody taking up the Vipassana course for the first time? Three things, essential things comes to mind. Vipassana is not for the faint-hearted. It is a hard tough course and uh, you, you must be determined, motivated and uh, must finish the course. So a lot of practice is involved. So practicing sitting one hour a day at least quietly on a cushion or on a chair without moving would be a start. And secondly, it's most most important is to clear your work and home desk. By this I mean to complete any pending issues, any issues which needs your attention so that while you're on the course that you're not disturbed uh, in terms of somebody ringing you wanting to come back or you worrying about some unfinished business or unresolved issue. So these would be my tips. Hope you are successful in your meditation uh, and attending the Vipassana course. Hope this was useful. Thank you. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed watching others talking about their experience, including my friend Sri Ram. And why don't I close out with answering the four questions myself and a final reminder of the Rondo structure. What is Vipassana all about? So question number one. How did I come to Vipassana meditation? Very, very unusual. Now, I was familiar with the word Vipassana and the name Esen Goinka because my own mother, starting in 1982, when I left home and went out into the world to work, she has been going for these camps over the years. And she's always mentioned I've been going for the camps and spoken glowingly of it. But I was familiar with the words. But when I read Yul Noah Harari's second book and saw the dedication to my teacher, Esen Goenka, who lovingly taught me important things, that is the point my interest was intrigued because Mr. Harari has got the clearest, clearest, clear thinking mind that I have come across. He's a trailblazer. And in his interview, he said, I don't think I could have written my books without the focus and the appreciation of reality that I got from doing Vipassana. He started off as a PhD student in Oxford 18, 16, 18 years ago. So he's also a master meditator. So that is how I got triggered. And then I watched videos and thought, should I do this? Should I not? I put it on my bucket list. OK, I'll get it done sometime. But then as I watched more videos, I said, let me... Let me at least apply it and see what happens. And I applied for a um, chance seat, you know, they say on the waiting list and I was accepted. So it all happened quickly and I'm so grateful that it did. After the first course, I knew I would, I ought to commit to doing this for life. Just another excellent habit. So that's how I came into Vipassana meditation. Question number two. What changes have I seen in myself? Or have others noticed in me when, since I've begun practicing? Now, I really can't answer what others have noticed. But in general, I think I've become, my big benefit, I've become aware that I have an advanced signaling mechanism, which is my body sensations and my breath. When any of these defilements, anger, hatred, uh, jealousy, passion, all that business, whenever they come up, I have a warning signal. Something in my breath will change. Somewhere there'll be a body sensation. And if I pick it up, I can control my response. So this constant awareness that I have a signaling system, I think this is what has really worked for me. And I know this sounds very theoretical and highfalutin, but it's really practical. For example, I was in an Apple store the other day and I had got a new phone and they were transferring it and something started going really wrong and I got very stressed. My God, please don't tell me I'm going to lose everything. And I just pulled back. Normally, I might have been a little guarded or defensive with the associate who was helping me. But I just pulled back. I said, hey, what's going on inside of you? Are able to watch? Especially in this part, there's a lot of activity that's taking place. Just watched it. This is going to go away. 
treat everyone well, they will take care of this problem. And initially it seemed quite a tricky problem, something about passwords and, you know, I can't help you, I don't have the password type of thing. But they came one after the other, they sorted it out. But that's an example. When I'm driving in traffic and someone cuts me off or so, I just, that, that reaction has gone. I'm more calm, I'm more able to watch myself and almost smile. So I would say that is the big benefit. I have become aware of my body sensations with a much higher clarity and resolution and it prevents me from my impulsive impurities. That is the big benefit. More equanimity, I'm committed to it and I know it's going to work. How do I apply Vipassana in daily life? I think I'm not doing as well as I ought to. Before doing any task, Ideally, I should go through a very quick meditative routine and be aware of what is happening even as I'm working and I focus for longer periods of time. I think I've improved, but this is the area where I want to improve the most. I am using Yuval Noah Harari as a model. He says that he's able to he meditate one hour in the morning, then does his work in one hour, and he says he's able to get a lot done because of this. So that's where I want to be. I've mentioned this earlier, but yes, I have improved. And from my own experience, what would I say to someone else who's considering taking a course for the first time? I'll keep repeating what I'm saying in the round of things. There's no magic here. There's no mystery here. This is a technique that will help you to come out of suffering. But what I would say to them is consider this to be another good habit. We know that exercising your body regularly, your hardware, is good for you. This is a form of exercise for your software, for something inside of you. So if you know that there are benefits from exercising, this is another form of exercising. This is one reason to do it. It has the same benefits as eating healthy food. That is, I would say, the main reason. Now, if a person is suffering either physical pain, disease, I would caution them the purpose of going for the training is not to get rid of this. This is a useful side benefit. So if you're going there to solve a problem, I want to get rid of... Uh, of an addiction, alcohol or some such, or pain, or even migraines. That is not the core reason to go. So don't go if you're trying to find a solution to a problem. Go there to learn a technique which will help to dissolve inside impurities and make you more calm, composed, and in general have more inner peace and harmony. If you seek more inner peace and harmony, give this technique a try. I recommend it highly. So. I've answered the four questions and let's close out one last time with the Rondo theme. What is Vipassana? The core of the Vipassana technique is being continuously aware of body sensations without reacting, conscious of everything, reacting to nothing, being calm and alert and relaxed at the same time. Uh, then yes, awareness plus equanimity. That is Vipassana meditation. This is a technique. It is hard work. It is not a rite or a ritual or a intervention that is magical or mystical. And the formula for success? Continuous work with proper understanding. Good luck on your Vipassana voyages. <laughs>